Having this true curiosity on the Randy Show. We had Atishi from the AAP on the show, uh, on the Hindi podcast. And from every political podcast, especially, I have a few takeaways. So my question to her was about freebies. Because the AAP is known for distributing freebies in Delhi. Free electricity, free water, up till a certain point. So I asked her that economically speaking, uh, can all governments actually afford to do this? Because that will help the country a lot. It will help the lower strata immensely financially. Her response was, yes, if there was no corruption. Is it true that there's enough uh, money with the central government, for example, which can be distributed as freebies for the lower stratas of society uh, if the government was entirely corruption-free in all layers? So one of the changes which has been ben very beneficial over the last few years is the use of uh, data and uh, and direct transfers um that has made it possible to reduce the amount of corruption in the flow of money to the final beneficiary so we can know who the final beneficiary is we can transfer directly into their bank account and through periodic filtering using aadhar this that we can filter out the people who shouldn't be receiving benefits nevertheless it is still difficult targeting the very poor because who is very poor right you can say acha you don't you shouldn't have a car you shouldn't have a government job you shouldn't have this you sh those are exclusion but if you apply all those you maybe get rid of 20% of the uh, people that remain leaves the remaining 80% now who amongst them is the very poor i think it's useful to allow the very poor to have some ability to improve their lives to invest in their children to make a difference and that's what we talk about in this book how do we get an upliftment of the very poor because if we want to become a rich country the poor have to become much richer they have to invest in healthcare in nutrition in education and if they don't do it when the kids are very young it's too late by age 5 the child is effectively you know if you, the child hasn't got good nutrition is effectively crippled for the rest of their life so if you give them a certain amount of money if they spend it on better food healthier food yes today everybody gets free, free food grains but maybe they need more vegetables maybe they they need more ghee maybe dal how do you allow them to make that choice maybe they want to send their child to a slightly better private school because the public school the, when i talk private school i'm talking about a small school which is run by people who take some fees not those uh, delhi public school etc but if you want them to do that can you give them a certain amount of money this will be beneficial because it will uplift when you invest in your family when you invest in your children invest in human resources which in the long run is really good for the country so targeted transfers i am not against the problem comes when you just spread it around to all and sundry as a you know political gimmick, gimmick. exactly and that becomes problematic now how to tell the difference uh, i mean there is the degree of targeting which is very important so you should basically focus on the needy population um and and the, then the how do you what do you target so offering it in in actual goods uh, so much electricity so much gas so much this thing is a little more uh, problematic because then the beneficiary has to take so much and they may not need all that uh so for example food grains if i give you so much food grain because so cheap you're tempted to just eat the food grain but maybe you need a more balanced diet but because vegetables cost so much relative to the food grain you fill your stomach with the food grain and then you get malnutrition you get all the diseases associated with bad uh diets so ideally i would give you money Hmm. to buy the food grains and the vegetables and the dals that you need for a balanced diet so direct money transfers i think are very good they empower the very poor if properly targeted you know free electricity free food grains etc becomes more problematic let me give you an example of free electricity becoming a problem if you give free electricity to the farmers what happens 
Well, they use it to dig bore wells and lift the water. That's good. But poor farmers can't dig deep bore wells. They cost a lot of money. Rich farmers can dig much deeper. So what happens? The water gets evacuated by the rich farmers. They get dig deeper. And the water table, the level at which the water is, falls deeper and deeper. So the poor farmers who can dig shallow bore wells don't get any water. This becomes very unequal. And this is not theory. This is actual practice what happens. So there are examples when you give free this or free that, it hurts some of the poor also. You have to make sure that that doesn't happen. Using the data we have because of Aadhaar, uh, we kind of at least have an idea about where the poor janta is. You give it to the women. That that a lot of states are starting to do. That's the idea they have. And and yes, that is in a, a, a option because there is a sense, whether right or wrong, that the women will invest more in their children. There's also a sense the men will blow it on drink. Yeah. That's not... That, that's what I would assume as well. The evidence is it's not that that strong. But, but nevertheless, there is a sense that even having the woman control the bank account... Unfortunately, in our country, there's an imbalance between the man and the woman. And giving the woman access to the household finances uh, is a positive step in empowering women. And that's, that's, that can be very useful. So I, I think, absolutely, we should do a lot of this. But the key issue, is it affordable, comes from how, go how well you can target. Unfortunately, if you target too... Uh, Narrowly, there are some poor people who'd be left out. Why? If, because we don't reach everybody, right? Okay. We have, even our Aadhaar doesn't cover every part of the population. Sometimes the poorest are left out. If you do the ration card, sometimes the very poorest don't have the ration card because they're sleeping on the footpath. They don't have any address. They don't have any. So we have to make sure nobody who's really poor is excluded. And I think we need to do a, do a better, better job of ensuring the rich or the richer ones who don't require this are actually excluded. So sometimes, you know, in Indonesia, what they did was they asked the village to identify the rich and to say, okay, we will uh, exclude these based on that village identification process. Um, we should make it a stigma for richer people to benefit from these transfers and, you know, maybe publicize in every village. These are the people getting the transfers. Then people say, Acha, this person has a car already and they're getting a transfer. How is that possible? So we need the system to work uh, and some of the information which is not in the system to come into the system without it becoming a police state. Acha, do you think that there is an element of truth in what Atishi said about corruption as well, that there's corruption that happens in the central government because of which more freebies cannot be given out. I don't think that is the constraint. I, th I think, in fact, one of the uh, uh, sort of positive achievements of the last 10-15 uh, years has been moving to this Aadhaar-based direct benefit transfer, which has made the government more efficient in giving uh, uh, direct transfers. Um, that said, I think the problem may be on the other side, and this is where the freebie culture comes in, that, you know, we also want to provide good schools, good uh, health care to the public. But when it becomes really easy to provide the freebie, and that's, what, again, what we write about in the book, that when you, when you uh, can put your face on an advertisement, we have every bank account in your bank account. Then, who gets the credit? That big politician whose face is on the front page. And then it becomes very convenient because I want to build up my name for the chief ministers, the prime ministers, whatever, to build themselves on the basis of freebies. It's very hard to say that I repaired the school in uh, the building, your school building, repainted it, made it cleaner. When you're sitting, uh, you know, in Delhi or in uh, in uh, Lucknow, and the school is in some small Mufasil area, right? Um, you know, if you were a much more decentralized uh, government like Delhi, then you can claim some credit. And, uh, you know, you were talking about Atishi. What the Delhi government has done right is fixed the schools, repainted them, so that the quality of education, the government schools, is now on par with the private schools, uh, including some of these public schools, Delhi public schools, etc. So that's, that's, that's a win. 
that's that's uh, very beneficial but we need more of that also who loses out in this freebies uh, situation if freebies are truly given out yeah. and by freebies i mean that little bag of money mm. that basically what i've gained from this overall answer that you actually put money into the bank accounts of the poorest of the poor does anyone lose out in this process not from that i think you actually buy um prosperity because you give them a chance to have a voice see money talks if that poor person comes with uh you know saab mujhe kuch de do uh even to a government of office they're not treated well if they go to a shop with 200 rupees or 2000 rupees in their hand and say i want to buy they treated with respect got so the bottom up freebie gives respect to those people at the bottom but and that's as a relatively poor country still there's only so much we can afford because then the freebie eats into the public provision of services mm. if you give too many freebies you can't afford that hospital you can't afford the school uh, which also need investment so it's a it's a trade off it's a balancing this is what economics is this is what economics is yeah that what do you sacrifice in order for growth exactly okay if you enjoyed this clip from the ranveer show we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics so explore the channel because there's something for everyone